Don't know how to use your washing machine? Trust me, you're not alone. In today's video, I'll be explaining what all the different settings and buttons on a washing machine do, how much soap to use, where to put it, what temperature to use, how to sort the clothes, how to properly load your washer, and everything else. Hopefully I'll be able to answer all the laundry questions you have, and even those you didn't know you had. This here is my washing machine. It's a basic Whirlpool model, and I do understand that yours may be a little different, or even a lot different, but many of the cycles and features will be similar from washer to washer, from brand to brand. But if you want to know specific instructions for your specific washer, the best way to do this is to simply look it up online using your model number. Most washers will have a sticker behind the door or the lid with the model and serial of your unit. Just type the model number into Google along with owner's manual and you should be able to find it. Each manual actually contains a lot of useful information, so I highly recommend you check it out. But let's get back to laundry and start by explaining how a basic or normal wash cycle works. A normal washing cycle is 40 to 60 minutes long and has four stages. Stage one, the washer fills with water. Two, it then tumbles or agitates the clothes to wash them. Three, the tub is drained and water is sprayed onto clothes to rinse them from soap. And four, the washer spins really fast to squeeze out as much water as possible from the clothes before you put them into the dryer. All four of these stages are done automatically, so all you need to do is press the start button and let the machine do its thing. Now that we kind of know how it works, let's go over all the different options you can select to make a simple wash cycle a lot more complicated. Let's start on the left side with the soil level. Depending on how dirty your clothes are is what you will pick here. If your clothes are really dirty, you would pick heavy, and if they're not that dirty at all, you would pick light or extra light. Heavy would use more water and it would be a longer wash cycle. Medium would take a little less, light even less, and extra light would be the quickest cycle. For most of our laundry, we keep this setting on light or medium. Next up is wash temperature. Your washing machine is hooked up to the hot and cold water in your house. So the tap cold option would be the same water temperature as anywhere else in your house if you open up a cold water faucet. And if you select the cold option, the washer will add in just a little bit of hot water to rise the temperature by about 10 degrees. Cool would raise the water temperature some more, warm even more, and the hot setting would use the hot water only without diluting it with any cold water. On the right side of the machine, we have rinse options, and this allows you to select how many rinses you want the washer to do when it's finished with the laundry. And if you'll be using fabric softener, you want to select the two bottom options, one rinse or two rinse with softener. That will let the machine know that you poured in some fabric softener and it'll dispense it at the correct time. We also have the water level selection, and you only get two options here. It's either auto or deep water wash. When it's in auto sensing, that means the machine will automatically try to sense how much clothes you put into the washer and it'll fill the tub accordingly. And if you select deep water wash, it'll simply fill the tub up to the maximum level. And now let's go over what all the different wash cycles do, starting from the quick wash. This is a good option to choose if you have just a little bit of clothes to wash and they're not that dirty. An upside of this cycle is that it only takes half the time to wash the clothes as a normal cycle would. The next cycle you can choose is delicate, and you would choose this if you're going to be washing delicate clothes, like lingerie, lace, silk, undergarments, or other delicate fabrics that should be washed only in cold water and a low spin speed so the washer doesn't destroy them. The next cycle is casual, and this one's exactly what it sounds like. If you have a load that mostly consists of casual clothes, like sport shirts or sweatpants, this cycle would be a good option. The next one is cold wash. It does not allow you to use warm or hot water. This will only use cold water settings. Up on top, we have the normal cycle. This is just for mixed clothes. If you have a bunch of different clothes together and you're not sure what cycle to choose, just go ahead and choose normal. Next up is super wash, and this is for clothes that are really dirty. So if you're a mechanic and you're in jeans all day and the jeans are stained, they have oil on them and they're super dirty, this would be a good cycle to choose. Keep in mind that this is an aggressive cycle though, so if you put some light shirts or delicate clothes in here, they can get a little bit ruined. The next cycle is heavy duty, and honestly, I think they just ran out of ideas, so they put heavy duty in here, which is essentially the same exact thing as superwash. They just needed to fill in the space. The next cycle is bulky items or sheets. 
and this is perfect for bed sheets, for blankets, for sleeping bags, for jackets, or washable rugs. The next option is drain and spin, and this literally only drains and spins, it does not do any of the washing. So for example, if you started a normal cycle, the washer already filled up and started agitating, but then you decided that you want to cancel everything, this would be a perfect cycle to use to drain the water completely out of the tub and spin the clothes out so you can take them back out. Another great use for this cycle is if you have sopping wet clothes that you need to dry out, you don't need to wash them, you just need to dry them. You can throw them into the washer, use the drain and spin cycle to squeeze as much clothes out of them as possible and then throw them into the dryer and your drying time will be a lot faster this way. The next one is rinse and spin. That's almost the same as drain and spin, except this one rinses the clothes as well. It sprays water on them to get any residue off or maybe you forgot to take the laundry out and it's been sitting there for three hours. It's starting to get musty and a little bit smelly. You can use the rinse and spin cycle to rinse the clothes a little bit and spin them out again before you throw them into the dryer. One thing to note is that rinses use cold water only. You cannot have a hot water or a warm water rinse. The next cycle is clean washer. On some other machines it's called sanitize. With this cycle you don't want to have any clothes in the washer. It's only meant to clean the washer up. To get any buildup out of there and if it's starting to smell, to get rid of that smell. When you use this cycle, you also want to add some bleach or some washer cleaner and this cycle should not be cancelled or interrupted. Most manufacturers recommend using this cycle every 30 washes to keep the inside of your washer fresh and clean. And the last cycle is soak. If you have some heavily stained clothes that you just want to soak in water, this would be the perfect cycle for you. The machine fills the tub, but it does not agitate or spin or anything. It literally just fills it up and once in a while the agitator will slowly move so the clothes move around a little bit. Once this cycle is over, it simply drains the tub but it does not go into a final spin. Once you selected the options and the cycle that you want, all that's left is to simply press the start button. If for whatever reason you want to pause the cycle, just press that button again and if you want to completely cancel whatever you started, just press and hold that button for 3 seconds. On my washer I also have progress lights. So if I come back to check in my washer, it's kind of convenient to know where it's at. So sensing is the very first step. If it's sensing the load, that little light will light up. Then it washes, rinses, spins. And if I see the little light lit up on top of done, then I know that the cycle is complete. There's also a light for locked. And this lights up when the washer goes into a spin. Some of these washers spin super fast. So for safety reasons, the door gets automatically locked when the washer is in a spin. Now that we know what the different wash cycles mean, let's go over some frequently asked laundry questions. How do you sort clothes by color? Optimally, you should separate your laundry into three groups and wash them separately. The three groups are whites, dark colors, and light colors. If you really don't feel like doing all that, then at the very least you should separate your laundry into two groups, whites and everything else. If you wash the whites with colors, all your white clothes may start to get a tint of different colors to them. Next question, how do you load the washer? As you put the clothes in, simply try to spread them out evenly so that they're not all clumped up on one side of the tub. And how full can you load it? About halfway or 50% full would be best, but 3 fourths is the maximum. If you stuff the tub 100% full, then your clothes won't really get washed so there's really no point in doing that. Next is, what detergent should I use? The brand you use doesn't matter. All laundry detergents do almost the same thing. But if you're like my wife and you're into healthy stuff, I would suggest doing some research on which brand is less toxic. I'll leave Amazon links to the ones we use in the video description. One more thing to look for is if your washer has a HE label on it, which stands for high efficiency. If it does, make sure you buy detergent that has HE on it. And for washers that are not high efficiency rated, this doesn't matter. The type of detergent you use is up to your preference as well. Liquid, powder, or tablets. Personally, we prefer the powder, but I do want to point out that if you regularly have clothes with heavy stains, the liquid tends to do a better job with those. How much detergent should I use? With this, just keep in mind that a little goes a long way. It's better to use a little less than use too much. Using too much soap leaves residue on the clothes, results in greasy buildup in the machine, increases color fading, 
and may create a ton of bubbles which might make the machine stop working. With tablets, simply use one pod no matter what size load you are washing. One is more than enough. With liquid, use one tablespoon for a regular load and maybe a maximum of two for a heavy load. And with powder, no more than four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup. And most importantly, where do you put the detergent? With liquid, regardless of whether you have a front load or a top load washer, you can always put the detergent straight into the drum. Simply pour it out on the bottom and then put your clothes on top. It is okay to do this instead of using the dispenser drawer. Or you could use the drawer, but make sure you pour it in the right compartment. Typically it will be labeled main wash or with two solid lines. Most people don't use fabric softener or the pre-wash, but here's how they're labeled if you want to try being in the minority. With tablets, just throw them on the bottom of the drum and put the clothes on top. Done. Powder is the only one that works better when it's put into the dispenser drawer, but you could put it on the bottom of the drum as well. We do it all the time at our house and the clothes come out great. As long as you don't use too much powder, all is good. But jokes aside, what is fabric softener and pre-wash for? Fabric softener takes your washing a step further and helps the clothes come out with less wrinkles and they literally feel softer. As for pre-wash, that would only be used with super dirty clothes that have heavy stains. You can add stain remover into that compartment or simply add more detergent. Next question is, how do you know what temperature and what cycle to choose? The best way to know is to look on the labels of the clothes you will be washing. Some tags play nice and spell everything out for you, but others prefer to use symbols. There's a whole crowd of different laundry symbols, but here are the most common ones and what they mean. A few washer brands actually try to be helpful with this and they put those symbols right on the machine. Tags are great and all, but they aren't always there. So for most laundry, you will only use cold or warm water. Cold water for normal loads and warm water for clothes with stains. When hot water is used, it tends to shrink the clothes more, bright or bold colors are more likely to bleed or fade, and blood and sweat can actually permanently set into the clothes instead of washing off. So if you enjoy those armpit spots on your shirts, try washing them in hot water. Whenever we use hot water, it's usually only for whites, not for colors. And if you are not sure which cycle to select, just go with normal as that setting works fine for most laundry. When the washing cycle is over and you move the clothes to your dryer, make sure you leave the washer door open so it airs out. If you regularly leave the door closed, your washer will start to smell. If you have a front load washer, you will also have a filter that you need to clean every few months. This filter is usually located on the bottom of the machine, and if you want to see an example of how to clean it, I have a video that's all about that. Do check it out. And that's all I had for you. If you have any other questions, I will see you in the comments. By the way, do you know what happened to the leopard that fell into a washing machine? He came out spotless. <laughs>